Simple quick tutorial today on some of the new functions dropped to the Mini 4 Pro and the Air recently. I'm talking about functions bundled under Focus Track, namely Spotlight, Point of Interest, and Active Track, or as it's now called, Active Shots 360 Degree, with its new Auto option, allowing you to put the remote away and take dynamic video of you or the subject all by itself absolutely brilliant feature that is unfeasibly easy to set up and use and that is what I'm talking about today. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones and yeah, the recent firmware update to the Air 3 and the Mini 4 Pro dropped a fair few new functions including new fully automatic mode for Active Shots 360. This is the new name for what most of us call Active Track or Follow Me, where you set the subject for the drone to follow and let it fly itself, or at least keep the camera focused on the subject, following you along as you walk, ride a bike, or drive a car, or whatever. All of these functions are housed under the collective name of Focus Track. To get started, you need to have the drone up in the air, two to 10 meters, six to 20 feet off the ground and away from you. Then simply tap and drag your finger on the screen to draw a small green box around the subject. Once the green box is set, a small pop-up menu will appear at the bottom, offering three different focus tracking modes. When you draw the green box, the Fly app works out if it's an object or a person or a vehicle, and it will change and offer different options accordingly. For a person, you'll see a small little running green figure at the bottom of the green screen. The center option called Spotlight is selected by default. This just sets the camera focus on the subject but lets you fly the drone however you want. No matter what you do or wherever you fly, the camera will do its best to stay focused on the subject. It's very straightforward. You just need to remember to press record to start videoing. And when you're done, it's also quite easy to forget you're still in Spotlight mode. You might find the drone won't turn or fly where you want it to. So just exit the mode by tapping the little green X and you'll be able to fly normally again. So that's Spotlight, nice and simple. Next up though, Active Track 360. This is where you can have some real fun. Once you've drawn the box, tap the Active Track option on the left. You then get three sub options above, Auto, Trace, and Parallel. Parallel is the most basic option where it's simply gonna fly parallel alongside you as you walk or run. You can use the sticks to alter the height and the position of the drone relative to the subject. But once you let go of the sticks, the drone will stay in that relative position and it'll just continue to follow you as you move along. On the left though is the new auto option. Now you can tap this, obviously again, remember to hit record, then just tuck the remote away as the drone will start moving around you using two different types of uh, smart shots, cycling through the follow shot and the helix shot continuously. Follow shot will just move along as a subject moves. Even if the drone is in front looking back, it'll just fly backwards and stay focused on the subject. In all cases, you can adjust the relative position and height to move the drone around using the sticks, but it will continue to keep cycling through the two types of shot moving around you, even when you put that remote down. So as I said, it lets you get a far more natural video clip and you don't have to show anybody actually using a remote. So great for following you if you're on the mountain bike or just walking. Uh, this little clip filmed down on the South Downs in East Sussex was absolutely perfect for this new function. Absolutely love it. Um, and then we may as well quickly recap the middle option that was always there before called Trace. Uh, if you have highlighted a person, then the moment you hit the green Go button, you'll see this 360 degree trace wheel appear. Now, this is simply a touchpad that lets you move the drone around you, swinging it around from behind you to in front, getting closer or more far away, and also changing height. And you control it by drawing a path for the drone to follow, swapping between the inner and outer circles and dialing it around, letting the drone then fly around you and move in or out based on the distance and height settings that you have set up for those two circles. You set those parameters in the main settings. You probably wanna do that before you start filming, of course. Go to the three dots top right, tap the control tab, scroll down to focus track settings. You'll see two screens, one for person and one for vehicle. And this is where you'll set the distance and height for the two circles for a person, whereas on the vehicle settings, you're only gonna have the one circle. 
But for the person settings, typically you probably want to have the inner circle uh, set low and close, whilst the outer circle higher up and further away from you. This way, when you're flying in trace mode, you can draw the path you want the drone to fly. And when you cross the path from the inner to outer, the drone is simply going to move away and up to the heights that you specified in this uh, setting screen. Further down in that screen, you can set the camera motion speed to normal or fast. Now, this is going to affect how smooth and gentle or fast and dramatic the drone moves around you. Uh, it affects the flight in both trace and the automatic mode. And as long as you're not surrounded by trees, then the fast option is probably going to give you more dynamic, fast moving video. The last option is ground clearance. Again, this affects both auto and trace modes and simply lets the drone get closer to the ground, which you may or may not want, depending on the area you're flying around. Long grass or plants may mess up the obstacle avoidance. So I don't know, in most cases, I think you can actually leave that set off. But to me, trace mode offers the best way to get really sweeping, fast moving shots that really show off your surroundings. My only criticism of it is that you have to keep telling it what to do by drawing a new trace pattern every few seconds. So obviously it's no good for cycling, but you can have a fair bit of fun if you're out walking the dogs or anywhere in a nice wide open space. And then finally, the last option on the main focus track display is POI or point of interest. This is useful for both following a moving person or for doing a fly around of a building or a specific object. Again, super straightforward this one. Uh, gives you a simple circular flight automatically, letting you dial up the direction and the speed when you tap the option. You can then uh, put the remote down and let it fly around, or you can keep hold of the remote and actually vary the height and the distance, the proximity from the subject whilst it's doing its circle. You can also speed it up or slow it down by varying that little circular arrow mid-flight. So again, I think a really nice, simple function and probably a bit underused. Remember, you've also got the option in the main settings uh, under control called subject scanning. This will automatically put a green plus button on anything it thinks might be a subject and it saves you from having to tap and draw the square because all you've got to do is tap that little plus and it'll automatically set the subject for you. It's a good little function this, I, I leave it on a lot because it also reminds you to think about using these functions just during a flight because you keep seeing a little green plus sign appear. So that's it. Look, I wanted to keep this as short as pos today. Um, as ever, give the video a little thumbs up, help the video along, drop a comment below if you have got any extra tips and ideas. And until next time, as ever, have fun, happy flying.